I thought that I saw you as a guy who came in here earlier. He looked just like you. I, I excused myself from the table. I, I went up to him and I, and I was like, I, I want to thank you for the path that you made. A total stranger, Mr. Harris. I was, I was like, I, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing and more of what you've done. And I appreciate what you've done for me because you've been an inspiration to me through your music endeavors. And he just simply looked at me and said, I don't know who you think I am. <laughs> I just came here to hear what Dr. Kimbrough and Dr. Clinton <laughs> But now that you are here, I can personally tell you, I really appreciate all the things that you have done. Even though you may not have been aware of it, I appreciate people who have came, came out and stepped out on faith on their own personal dreams and aspirations to get into the music field and do what they do because I know that it's such, uh, it's, it's a crazy business, I'm gonna put it that way. A lot of things can happen, and I just would love this for this crowd to join me in a round of applause as I bring uh, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Now you don't have to stand behind the podium if you want to stand out front, okay? He went ahead and did it to somebody else. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, just like to say thank you for having me. Um, I really never really looked at it as an inspiration to the youth of the business world when I was grinding, trying to, uh, you know, go off my passion, my faith, and uh, step out there. Um, so when, you know, a lot of young people who are in the music business or trying to get in the music business, they, they come to me like, you know, how, how is it uh, in the business? How did you do it? have a lot of uh, discouraging moments and I just tell them simply you gotta follow your dream and your passion you know you, you definitely can't do what you want to do for money you know everybody wants to get paid it's about accomplishments but it's not for money it's not a monetary thing that I went after to do it I actually when I first started making money um, I didn't look at it as oh, I'm making music to financially, you know, move forward. And people ask me, how long have you been doing music? You know, I looked kind of young, and I had been doing it for a little while, and I said, um, for a long time, but I've only done it shortly since I started getting money. You know, I did a lot of free music, and eventually it, it paid off. So definitely follow your dreams, but don't make it all financial. Um, here in Atlanta, we were walking up the strip, and I hadn't been to Clark, in a minute, but I used to hang out here a lot, you know, especially when I was in New York. Got a lot of my inspiration through that. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, me, I came here from California, and it, it was a rapper named Eric Sermon. I don't know if you heard of EPMD. Um, he came here, and we started a rim shop. It was on Peace Street, and we actually. I built a studio in the basement of the rim shop, and it was kind of known. A lot of celebrities, who are celebrities now, came by there to buy reels. Some artists came by there, tried to be celebrities, and but I used to basically sell rims in the daytime and, and made beats at night. And so that's kind of how I really even started here in Atlanta. So, you know, it was a um, great way to show me the uh, work effort that you have to put in. You know what I'm saying? People were like, you're the rim salesman, you know. <laughs> but they would come to the basement in the studio, and I was the producer, so, <laughs> you know, they kind of got a kick out of that. But, you know, I looked at it as I, I was paying my dues and so putting some work in. And basically from there, um, Sean Puffy Combs had came in, and he had, had came to listen to some artists that, that was meeting there, and they were buying some rims. So the artist that he ended up um, introduced introducing himself to was an artist I did some music on. So he basically heard the music and then asked who did the music and I told him I did it and he said, you know, I really like the music, I'm gonna sign the artist, I'm gonna sign you as a producer. And I think that 
next week, he said, I'm going to bring you to New York. And from that day, I went on to do every Bad Boy artist that, that was on, on Bad Boy, you know, from Biggie to Faith to uh, 112. And we, he immediately put me with 112 because they were from Atlanta, too, just starting at that point. So, you know, it was a great chemistry. And, you know, Puffy, as a businessman, was very instrumental to me because he was very, he was very um, versatile. Everybody knew him as being a hype man on the music and, and take that, take that. But he, <laughs> he definitely showed me how to become a businessman because, for one, he never slept. He would do, you know, recording in the day and the night. Then he would go to the club. He called it promoting. But he was basically partying and popping bottles. But he was like, you got to see what the crowd is going to, you know, react to your song. You got to be out here in it. So when he first brought me out there, it was me, him, and little Kim in the car. And we were going to the club. You know, you get off the plane, you're kind of tired. And uh, we went, he picked me up, we went to the studio, grabbed little Kim, and went right to the club. I'm like, okay, yeah, that means we're going to start, you know, tomorrow. We left about 3 in the morning, and we, and we went right from the club. I'm thinking he's dropping me at the hotel. We went right to the studio. He's like, get in there with her and do something. And I'm sitting there like, well, we, just, we just came from the club. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yo. He's like, yo, look, money don't sleep, and, and business doesn't sleep. You know what I'm saying? So from that point on, and he said he's going to put hot sauce in my mouth went to sleep in the studio, so, you know, stuff like that he would do to just let you know you can't waste time, you know what I'm saying, if you're on a mission, if you got a uh, passion to do something, jump on, there's no better time than the present, so, um, but basically I went from then to uh, from Bad Boy and uh, went on to Rockefeller, I, I, I spent a little time with them, did a lot of uh, Rockefeller artists, Jay-Z, I was the first one to put Jay-Z with uh, collab with Too Short, I don't know if any of y'all heard that song, but he, it's the first time he did something with someone from the West Coast. So um, from there, went on to meet uh, many executives, you know what I'm saying, and, and went to Mary J. Blige, uh, Aretha Franklin, a lot of people in the studio. It, it, was, it was more like, you know, your dreams coming true every day, because I was meeting different relationships and learning how to handle business as an uh, as independent contractor. That's basically what the music business is. To me, I looked at it as I was selling myself, my skills, and, and uh, moving into a more business frame of mind. And I think with the music business the way it is now, it pushed young people, black, white, I don't care what color it is, to become more businessmen because the record companies today are basically shutting down because the internet is so powerful. Basically, you don't need a record company or a record label to become a star. The internet or that laptop, you can become a star from your living room. So that made the record companies basically stop giving money, so many advances, so many uh, budgets for videos to artists because now you can do videos for uh, $2,000, you can have a video on YouTube and it looks phenomenal.